In classical guitar, we have to mind details. And really tiny details in sometimes very tiny pieces can make a big difference. In this video, I will talk about the natural sign in a very, very tiny piece by Fernando Carulli from Opus 114 in G major, the, so to say, second easiest piece in all the collection. And this natural sign has quite an importance because it's changing a normal scale study into a little piece of music. Watch this. The prelude starts just with a major scale. We have a four quarter time signature. The root is a quarter note, the rest are eighths. Technically, it could be mentioned that Carulli would have played the bass strings, so the lower scale, with the thumb only and the rest with alternate strokes I am. And that's it. It's going on with the same G major scale in thirds. Something like this. Again, thumb on the bass strings, I am alternate stroke on the higher strings. So where's the music? It's coming now. In the second octave of the scale in thirds, we have this. So here is a little detail which came to my ear and to my eye almost immediately. This F natural in the end of bar 7. Because it changes almost everything. If the scale would have continued in G major, it would have been this. Quite normal. But here... The F natural and three notes later the F sharp to some degree are in conflict. There is, we have that minus second in memory in our ears. So that's something that is anyway solicitating to some degree my attention on it. So what are the consequences of that F natural? What does it mean? Well, it could simply mean G7 at the chord, because the F natural would be the minor 7 in a G7 chord. So this single F natural as a um, downwards bound guiding tone to E does something like this. And then going on to the G, which is still in C major, and then we could have, for example, or even single notes can induce us to hear harmony that actually does not appear. So the F sharps going down as a guiding tone to E. Then again F sharp as in A minor. And then G with D in the bass. That's what I hear. And D7. And G major at the end. So to some degree that little tiny note does this effect at least to me. But there's a second thing that came to my mind. When I take these four notes, F, E, G, F sharp, actually we have one of the most famous four note motifs in music history. You know that melody? 
No? Oh, I have to transpose that to C major just a second. In C major, it would be B flat, A, C, B. You got it now? I should translate that to German. In German, the note names would be B, A, C, H, which obviously is the name of our most beloved composer, Johann Sebastian Bach. And as such, Bach himself used that little motif in his Art of the Fugue, Kunst der Fuge, and many composers after him, as an homage to his name and his work, used that little motif in compositions to the honor of Johann Sebastian Bach. And that makes it a very, very famous motif. Well, I don't believe that Carulli used that note to honor Bach because it's not the original B flat, A, C, B natural, or B, A, C, H. Carulli would have written another piece if he wanted to write in homage to Bach. But anyway, this combination of those four notes has been to Bach and many composers quite intriguing to, well, try to solicitate in them what ideas musically could come to them using that little motif, which is quite odd. Well, here Caroli had one use of that little motif, and it's quite beautiful. Let's come back to our tiny prelude. He went up in thirds for ending in this G, and in theory, at that point, the piece could have been ended. But Caroli adds this. which is melodically a full cadence. If we take the G and the E and the B, which are in the melody, we have an E minor chord, which follows after the G major chord. The notes after that could be combined to an A minor or to a C6. And then D7 and G major. And this is done again by accidentals. The D sharp creates a guiding tone to E, which gave me the hint that this might be E minor as a chord which appears in the G major scale. Then B, C again is a guide tone to C. So C or C6. And here the bass line for a 2, 5, guiding tone again to 1. So this little line combines chords melodically because all the notes that belong to chords that we could hear here appear one after another and combine in our memory to the chords, so we have that impression to have a kind of chordal cadence. And that's quite nice. That's just very much more music than only a scale as in the beginning or a scale in thirds. And when we now consider all this, what we have seen, we could come to the idea of an interpretation of that very tiny little prelude. Preludes have been improvised in the ancient times. They had the duty to introduce to the tonality of the piece, of the main piece that was following, and to arise the attention of an audience. So, this G major scale brings us immediately to the root of the piece. G as a quarter note, and the scale in eighths, repeated in the second octave. What we can do as an interpreter is just, well, underline the importance of the root note, make it slightly longer than the real value in the 4-4 four um, tempo would be. So you could accelerate a bit the scale in the 8s. The second effect of that kind of playing would be that we have the tactus, the connection between the main impulses that the 
downbeats in the beats half so that we really get one 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 so with a bit of agogic we could get it a bit more lively than simply then the second part is in eights and here we have one longer line as we actually skip one note going back the line is longer so we are now in four beats uh, in four measures actually until we reach the highest point and in that highest point we get our not b a c h motive so here you could actually do some kind of crescendo for example outlining this motive again playing it a bit more slower probably free in the tempo mind that the tempo is ad libitum so you have from the composer the liberty to play freely the tempo as well it must not be completely perfect in metronome tempo and as we began to play freely and to interpret the bars as a whole going from the downbeats to the next and outlining with dynamics a crescendo for example and a bit of agogic the the scale in thirds we now have absolutely the liberty to interpret and orchestrate as well the last part which is the ending <laughs> We could imagine that there is another group of instrument or another single instrument answering kind of a violoncello or something like this. So if you have for all the piece some ideas on orchestration, what instrument could play the single parts, that could be a good mindset for you just to play this more interesting than just producing the notes as a simple technical study. Now why should I do that? This is so a short piece and it's well for me you might think it's not a piece that i would ever play in a concert right but as composers for example practice composing by writing tiny little pieces just some sketches actually an interpreter could practice interpreting and reading and creating ideas on a piece of music using those little pieces and playing them if as if there were orchestral pieces if if there were pieces to be played in the carnegie hall in the royal albert hall in the kkl in lucerne wherever you like do this and you have more instruments as an interpreter for more important music so to say and if you have fun in playing those tiny little pieces i assure you people who listen to your playing will have fun in listening Okay, thank you for watching. Hope you liked the video. If you did so, subscribe to the channel. You will find the PDF of the piece on my Dropbox when you subscribe to the newsletter. And yeah, have a good time. See you next time. Bye.